So, in today's episode of Tech Tips, we're going to be going over why you should always, in my personal opinion, there's probably going to be some people who say you shouldn't, lock your bushings and bearings into the gearbox with a little bit of a, a bearing retaining compound or a good quality Loctite or something to that accord. I wouldn't recommend using super glue, but the main reason I always lock these into the gearbox shell, when I say lock into the gearbox shell, it's essentially, for lack of a better term, you're basically gluing them in. Now I could drop these in and they should be fine. They've got a bit of retention, the gearbox is well made. You know, they, they fit in quite snugly. You know, they don't come out on their own. But in some of the cheaper gearboxes, um, you'll find the bushings tend to have a little bit of spin where you can sort of tip it upside down and they'll fall out. Now what you don't want to do is allow that to keep falling out and as the gears spin, the bushing or sometimes, you know, if your bearing's a bit knackered, the bearing or the bushing might spin in the gearbox shell itself. Essentially over a long period of time, that 7.9mm hole will ream out to an 8mm hole. And you think, well, it's only 0.1 of a mil, 0.11 of a mil. But that will mean this bushing, will, uh, the hole that this bushing sat in will eventually get bigger and bigger and this thing can eventually move left to right, up and down, and spin a bit more freely than it should. Which will mean the gears can move on different planes and the shimming will sound worse than it needs to be. So if you're going in a gearbox shell, always, always lock them in. Now you can find different products to do it with. I'm not going to recommend one because I've no doubt some will say, I use this stuff and this is better. Now, one thing you need to do before you start is degrease the gearbox shell and the bushings or bearings you're about to install to give the, chem well, the chemical or the, the glue or whatever you're about to use the best chance to set. So I'm going to quickly degrease this and we'll lock them in position. All I'm going to use is a bit of towel, preferably lint free. Spray a bit on, and just give it a good clean. Now thankfully these aren't really greasy in the first place or oily, but sometimes they're going to be, especially if it's a gearbox you've just opened with the intention of re-shimming. I always recommend giving it a good degrease. Now you can either use a, a sort of a specific degreaser, this one's from New Prol, I'm giving it a try. Or you could use say an isopropyl alcohol or something like that, that will attack the grease and just get it shifted. My bushings degrease now quickly do the gearbox you don't need a lot now I recommend you just change the position of the towel every time because if not what you're going to do is pick up the grease from the last um, one you've done and just simply shift it across to the next hole <laughs> So, that's these all degreased, let's put this on the other side, give these a quick uh, dab of Loctite. Now you don't need a lot. Just going to run a thin bead around the outside edge and slightly on the inside rim. So when I push this bushing in, it's going to pick it up on both sides. wipe the excess off being careful not to get any in the center hole of the bushing or if you're installing bearings you don't want to get any in the ball bearing part so if you get any in the ball bearing part it's going to basically make the bearing seize up and essentially make it useless and potentially cause you problems down the line so that's something to bear in mind Now if you don't want to get your hands absolutely covered in whatever you're using to lock them in, you can just use the back of a screwdriver and just carefully push them in position to make sure they're nice and flat. And that'll just assist you to get them seated properly. Assuming it's a slightly tight fit, sometimes it's a bit of a looser fit and that's where this step is quite critical. You need to make sure they're nicely locked in position. Now I'm not wiping, I'm dabbing the excess off. There we go, that's the 
the first three done, let's get the other three seated. from this and allow it to dry you need to ensure all these are pressed in as nicely as possible and as flat as possible if you leave these to dry and they're not quite in position it will cause you problems down the line now we'll double check all seated nicely where I want them. No excess oozing out from all the edges. So now you're going to read the back of the particular system you've used, either a Loctite bearing compound retainer or something like that, and see what the cure time is. Now I'm going to leave this overnight. I'm not going to touch this till tomorrow now. I just wanted to make sure these were set in position so they've got as much time to dry as possible. Because if I was just to go right, they're set in, the glue's doing its job, I can start shimming. You could potentially move those bushings or bearings and slightly dislodge them and before you know it you've got a problem on your hands. So this is the part where at the end of the day, last job, get your next job on the bench and just get them set in position. Or you know, if you're ready to go to bed and you've had enough of teching for that particular evening, set them in and then at least you know you can walk away and then the next day when you're fresh and you've had a bit of a think about what you want to do next, these are all set and good to go if I was to put grease on these and start shimming and pissing about it could mix in with that uh, particular this Loctite that I've got in and sort of keep it wet and it won't allow it to keep, uh, adequately dry so like I said make sure you degrease it set them in position wipe the excess off give it adequate dry time and then come back when it's dry so that's all for tech tips today and uh, I wish you all the best luck with your upcoming builds chaps I'll speak to you soon